Yarswood Immigration Removal Centre has always been controversial for what it does and the private company that runs it. What goes on inside is shrouded in secrecy. Our undercover filming has revealed shocking contempt by some guards for their detainees, along with alarming incidents of self-harm. Tonight, one member of staff has already been suspended, and Serco, the company that runs it, has announced an independent review. And remember, most detainees are immigrants, not criminals, asylum seekers whose claims have been rejected. All this week, we'll be looking at the lives of migrants in British detention centres and those outside. Tonight, crying to get out. Our social affairs editor, Jackie Long, reports from Yarl's Wood, and a warning, her report contains language from the start many will find offensive. Yarl's Wood, Britain's most notorious and secretive immigration centre. The last stop for asylum seekers and illegal immigrants due to be deported. Cameras have never been allowed in. But Channel 4 News has been undercover in an investigation spanning months. Tonight, our investigation uncovers the reality of life in Yarlswood. These are the first pictures from inside. 400 detainees, the vast majority women, their care handed over to the private security giant Serco, chosen, the Home Office say, on quality and cost. We examine the controversial detention of pregnant women and look at how they are treated. Who collapsed in the uh, Well, it's obviously repeated. The technical thing is that no further concerns were raised. The disturbing cases of self-harm. <laughs> And the shocking attitudes of some guards towards the women. You know what? They're all the f***ing bad. They're all the f***ing bad. They're all animals. They play with animals. They're f***ing animals. It is life under lock and key, yet the Home Office is clear. Yarlswood is not a prison. For years, allegations of sexual abuse, inhumane and degrading treatment of the detainees have swirled around Yarlswood. Allegations Serco have robustly denied. Their focus, they say, is on decency and respect for the residents. Guards who start on salaries of around £14,000 a year are appointed, say Serco, only if they have the right attitude. This is a member of the Serco management team. It was not an isolated viewpoint. Some of those women in there are horrible. They're really, really horrible. They're evil. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of them are really nice. But some of them, these black women, they're horrible. Man. Serco say they realise the women in their care are at a difficult stage in their life. Detainees often resist forced removal, sometimes by removing their clothes. As one guard explains, that doesn't always work. She were going to the Royal Courts of Justice and we were moving her on a Sunday. I ain't going to the Royal Courts of Justice, I said you are. You'll have to take me in the minicures. They, they take the clothes off, right? It's not normally Jamaicans, but it's a very common thing with African ladies. Mm -hmm. But uh, they never slim and petite and yeah. pretty. Humiliation is just one of the abiding memories of Yarlswood for Esther Azigwe, released at the end of January. In Yarlswood, I did feel like I was an animal. You know, every morning they come to count you. In the evening also, they count you. So it's just like animals that they do count to make sure that they are at the right number, not human beings. And then I, I did feel also that I was a prisoner. Like 85% of the women at Yarlswood, Esther, who's from Ghana, says she was a victim of sexual violence before fleeing to the UK. Already struggling with depression in Yarlswood, she said her mental health deteriorated badly. When guards said they were about to remove her by force, she said she was desperate. They started running and then they started chasing me. And then she was like, Esther, please, we need to go. And then I was like, I'm not going. I don't want to go. And then she said, you need to go. And then I, I stood by the steps. I said, if you come near me, I will jump. And then she still came. 
And then I say one more step, I will jump. And then she still tried to come in and then I jumped. Yeah. Back at Yarl's Wood, Esther's story has struck a chord with one of the guards. Really? How much can you? This one jumped over the stairs. What's her name? Esther jumped. Why did she jump up the stairs? For her. She didn't want to go on her child flight. When was that? A couple of months back. The government denies there's a specific problem at Yarlswood. The Home Office Minister, Lord Bates, told Parliament last Tuesday that there had been no serious attempts at self-harm at Yarlswood in the last two years. Yet figures obtained under Freedom of Information show that the number of self-harming incidents requiring medical treatment here has risen from just one in 2011 to 74 in 2013. They will the wrist. Let them slash the wrist. Why would they want to slash the wrist? I don't understand. The shocking details of the incidents have never been disclosed. One woman had been at Yarlswood for almost two years. She's got the longest one in there. She's from China, but the she was on the stair one, so I jump. I've ended up in hospital in like a brace to their back when he broke it. She had to be in a wheelchair and that, so they decided that, so she got released. Yeah, not been quite a bad way to jump from the others. This is the one that people have jumped up? Well, they do. They do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is the stairwell that both women jumped down. There remains no net or barrier should someone try to jump again. Serco say they take all incidents of self-harm extremely seriously, adding that in the last year the numbers have gone down. On three occasions women have jumped from the stairs and thorough reviews were undertaken to prevent those women further self-harming. But each time it was decided adding nets or a barrier would be ineffective. Serco recognise that many of the detainees are vulnerable and say offering the highest standard of care is a priority. There is a healthcare unit providing 24-7 care. It's actually been outsourced to a different private company, G4S. But Esther Azigwe told us medical staff routinely treat detainees with scepticism. When you are ill and then you go to healthcare, they go like, oh, you are doing this because of your immigration status they don't take you serious you are lying you are lying because you want to find a reason to for them to release you and then the doctor say that you know what if you are doing this because of your your migration status we have doctors who will take you back to your country so don't pretend this is the story of how one pregnant woman was treated at Yarlswood. It's Wednesday and the woman, we'll call her Anna, has rung an alarm in her room. Uh, uh, 196, but there were further concerns and the following day the woman was back in hospital and was told she had lost her baby she was warned of the risk of infection and to seek help if the pain got worse just after eight the next morning, she did just that and came back here to the healthcare suite. Bleeding and in a state of great distress, she was desperate to go to the hospital. Serco staff record that she was refusing to wait her turn and she was spoken to for hitting the alarm button and trying to ring an ambulance herself. G4S says she was offered a doctor's appointment at 10.30 and further medical checks by staff at Yarlswood, but she declined. More than three hours after first arriving at the healthcare suite, staff called an ambulance. G4S say whilst the resident's miscarriage was understandably a deeply distressing experience for her, they insist she received an excellent standard of clinical care. The detention of pregnant women is one of the most controversial aspects of life at Yarlswood. They're only supposed to be held in exceptional circumstances 
During our investigation, we knew of six pregnant women at the centre. While guards are not allowed to use any force against these women, there is increasing concern about the practice of splitting them from their partners to send the men back. Yeah. It's Friday night and an alarm has been sounded. There's um, a move on, yeah? Yeah. I don't know how to get the cameras onto the legals. Yeah, because there's going to be family splits in the legals. Guards are attempting to split a Sri Lankan couple. Watching from the control room, it becomes clear the officers on the ground are struggling to contain the man. Second response, second response, immigration room one. I say again, second response, immigration group one. The man is eventually separated from his pregnant partner and can be seen on the monitor being escorted away by officers. There are strict protocols around dealing with pregnant women and no evidence they've been broken here. But for many campaigners, the question is whether pregnant women should be detained at all. We witnessed another attempt by guards at the centre to separate a man from his pregnant partner. She couldn't get him away from her. She clung on to it. And we couldn't use force on her. And we couldn't get him. And I just didn't want to move. And they couldn't bloody move him. And they got him on the floor. And it was just all... They, they, they were bit. kind of like trying to drag him out of my hand. And I was like... Mm. Less than 5% of pregnant women held at Yarls would go on to be deported. Many campaigners question why they are detained at all. It's not just pregnant women who are only supposed to be detained in exceptional circumstances. It's the elderly and the disabled too. And it's not all the guards who are entirely without sympathy. Here staff are watching an elderly man on CCTV who's being held in the family unit. We don't know whether his are exceptional circumstances but one of the staff seems shocked to find him here. I don't get where immigration get off detaining people like that. It's like 85. Like my grandparents being detained, oh, f them, they're not. Well, f he's not gonna run anywhere. He's not gonna go anywhere. What, he's gonna be a drain on the economy outside? He's a drain on the f resources in here. Just f leave him, he's 85. Sick. Today they were saying, that he's been in this country for... 17 years. Yeah. This is the Kingfisher segregation unit. It's used as a cooling off area for detainees who cause trouble. Some of the guards' most aggressive language is directed at the women locked up here. What's that in there for? What's he in there for? Tonight, a detainee has been locked up in Kingfisher for an attempted assault on an officer. Serco told us they would be shocked and angry if any employee talked about people in a disrespectful or obnoxious manner, that they worked hard to ensure the highest standard of conduct and would take disciplinary action wherever appropriate. But they say there are no grounds to suggest this behaviour is indicative of a wider or endemic problem. Allegations of male staff walking unannounced into women's rooms and seeing them naked or showering surfaced again at the beginning of the year. Serco said their male guards are not allowed to enter without any warning or watch women showering. But here, a guard seems dismissive. Uh, allegedly, what's into someone's room without knocking? Uh, I'm not going to be just now, so I'm just waiting for... Oh. You met quite a lot of so I look out, but I just like tits. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm addicted to the viewing of tits. No, you won't because some of the tits you see, oh, you never want to see them again. <laughs> I never saw them at all. Serco told us as a result of the complaint, swift disciplinary action was taken, and this individual has been suspended pending further investigation. Tomorrow, MPs will deliver their verdict on Yarlswood in a cross-party report on detention. They're expected to call for a complete end to the detention of pregnant women, but they also want a radical rethink of the entire system. A third of the people who are detained for indefinite periods in centres like Yarlswood end up being released back into the community. So their question is, what purpose does detention serve? And is there a better alternative? 
Jackie Long reporting, well, we did ask the Home Office for an interview, but no one was available. They gave us a statement saying they take the allegations very seriously. Serco and others were expected to undertake thorough and immediate investigations into all matters raised by this programme. The statement added, we will not hesitate to take appropriate action. Well, with me now is the Labour MP, Yasmin Qureshi, a member of the Home Affairs Committee. What action would you take? Well, I would firstly carry out a completely independent uh, examination, and I know they've appointed, I think, someone to look into it. But secondly, I think people need to go in, deal with the issue of ladies who are pregnant, put them into much more safer places. Women who have been trafficked or who have been victims of sexual abuse or physical abuse should also be taken away from Yarwood and actually placed in a much more a better accommodation which is uh, more sensitive to their needs. And actually a lot of these women need to be taken out of this particular detention centre right now. Why do you want to detain pregnant women at all? Well, I don't think they should be, but I'm trying to Well, you to said say take them out and put them into safer... Facilities, it's, what does that mean? Safer facilities in the sense that they need somewhere to be accommodated, somewhere to live. So they shouldn't uh, be separated from their partners anyway? They should not be separated from their pe uh, partners and they should be put in, as I said, in like, you know, better accommodation, like maybe um, a safer environment, uh, maybe even if it's temporarily, uh, maybe in a hotel, but in a more a proper accommodation where they're being looked after and not into a detention centre. But the fact, the fact of Yarl's Wood and its, its private contractor is a Labour legacy. Do you think that was now a mistake? Should it be reversed? Well, I'm one of those people who think that privatisation of uh, detention centres or prisons shouldn't have taken place in the first place, whichever government it is. Uh, I so, think you, so you would take the contract away from Serco well, I if, would if Labour take, was in office? Well, I can't speak obviously for the Labour Party, but I can say certainly that I'm one of those people who thinks that detention centres, prisons, things like that should be within the state's control in any event. Right, but I that's not that, Labour policy, is that what you think? I don't, I, I believe You don't know what Labour policy is? The Labour policy I know is at the moment, like others, is like continuation of privatisation, but in my, I'm talking about now in my personal capacity, which is my personal view has always been that these kinds of organisations should not be in private hand. And Serco, we've noticed, has not just made mistakes in Yardswood, but also, you know, for example, they charged the Home, of, uh, the home Office recently uh, £65 million for overcharging of tagging. So there are things going wrong with Serco, and I think that needs to be looked at. So, so you think Labour is going into the election with the wrong policy on immigration detention centres? No, I'm but not. The, the, in your view, they should be scrapped? But Labour believes in continuing with the private There's provision. many people who believe that private... This isn't a debate that people can have about, you know, whether things be privatised or not. I come from the wing of uh, thought that most things shouldn't be privatised, but that doesn't mean to say that uh, privatisation in itself generally the concept is wrong. I mean, there are people who think that privatisation is better. I have, I'm talking about now my personal view, and that has to be distinct from... But I can tell you one thing, the Labour Party's front bench, even last year, Yvette Cooper was saying that pregnant women should not be in detention centres. She was saying the people, victims who are being you know, sexually abused or traffic victims, they shouldn't be in the detention centres. And they actually said last year they were asking for a full independent investigation into Yarwood to find out what has happened. In fact, in that, the Labour Party has been ahead of the curve since last year. Yes, but uh, what, what, what you seem to be saying is that Yvette Cooper still believes in private well, provision I'm, and would continue the running of these to, places as, they, as they are. I'm not speaking to Yvette Cooper about the right. privatisation. I can tell you that what she has said, which is, and the Labour front bench has been consistently saying that Yarwood needs to be looked that and that the things need to be changed. But why, why do you want to lock up failed asylum seekers anyway? We live in a world of GPS tags, you can track people. There's an 85 year old man in that centre yeah. that the, even the guards thought was ludicrous. Yeah. I mean, well, wh wh why do we need these places? Well, I'm coming from a perspective, you have to understand, this is my, from my personal perspective, which is that I don't believe that we should have uh, detention centres for people who are, uh, can be accommodated elsewhere. There may be a room for some people, and that's a very small minority of people, perhaps who are waiting to be deported, who there's no accommodation can be found for them, and they've been tried the option of reporting to a police station, and they've actually failed to report at police station, and they've actually been consistently showing that they cannot be trusted with bail, I mean, because as you know, bail can be given in immigration cases. Now, what we I do believe that most people should be given that bail, and they should have a place to live in. If they are consistently failing to attend to a police station, and they're not a traffic person, or they're not a pregnant woman, and they are somebody who are, that's so there's a. So you would lock for. up a very small number of people. Look, you, you've, you've admitted tonight that you're sort of you're on a wing of your party. You're at odds with where your party is on this in terms of 
in terms of policy. Well, I don't I mean, have, okay. Well, I mean, you said you, you would scrap these places and it's your party's policy to, 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 to keep them as, as things... Well, most part, to political... Yes, I mean, detention centre, but I would say they should be only used for exceptional circumstances where somebody's consistently shown to not turn up, for example, to report to a police station or where they've gone, you know, uh, effective what's called AWOL, i.e. you don't know where they are. Yeah. So for those people, yes, but for a lot of people who can be trusted on bail, what we need to do you is look at there. more people should be put on bail and that that should be used far more as a provision. Well, the actor, Juliet Stevenson, helped launch an ultimately successful campaign seven years ago to end the detention of children in centres like Yarlswood. I spoke to her a little earlier and began by asking what could be done to improve the situation for asylum seekers in the UK. There is a view that you don't need detention at all. It's a completely obsolete system of holding people. First of all, it's important to remember that these people who've come to this country having suffered abuses in, in their countries of origin and are seeking asylum here. They are not to be confused with illegal immigrants. These are people who've committed no crime. They're perfectly legally entitled to seek asylum. And many of them, many of them are genuine asylum But a lot seekers. of these people are people who are being deported. So they have been deemed by our system to not have a legitimate claim. Well, that may be because they haven't had proper legal representation. I mean, many people who do finally get legal representation are allowed to stay. They get leave to remain. And many of those people have passed through Yarlswood. So it only goes to show that the system for granting asylum here is not efficient and not fair. Because as we now know, many people don't get legal representation without which they can't make a, a, a valid, they can't make a claim. But, but are you saying people wouldn't abscond? If you, if you didn't lock them up before deportation, I think they I, would just turn up at the airport and say, okay, send me home? No, of course that, that's, deportation is, very, is a different issue. I think that, um, there is a system here already that exists in, in society that people report regularly. There are many people seeking asylum here who are not in detention and they report regularly to, their, to the home office through the local offices and so on. And that's a system that works. If there is, uh, in, in cases uh, where there's a danger of absconding, then you could electronically tag which achieves the same thing. Nobody can disappear if they have a tag on them. You don't need to imprison people. There is no question that it's not a prison. It is. The crucial thing about these women is that many of these circo guards are men and the vast majority of detainees in Yarlswood are women who have suffered very serious forms of sexual abuse, very often rape, very often multiple rape, systematically and routinely for long periods of time. And circo guards may not know that these women have suffered these abuses, but they have, and therefore for any woman in that situation, she's already traumatized. Much more importantly, I think you really don't need these detention centers. I don't think, Sweden, for example, has recently got rid of their detention centers and they have a system where people report to their local communities and if, as I say, they are running the risk of absconding, then they're electronically tagged. There's something deeper as well, though, isn't there, in those attitudes that we saw towards women, towards black women, to, towards respect of other human beings. Yes. Where well, you wouldn't want those attitudes exhibited in any uh, public service. Of course you wouldn't. We really need now the Home Office to sit up and take notice of this. Well, I'm joined now by our social affairs editor, Jackie Long, who reported tonight's investigation. Jackie, what's been some of the other reaction to what we've reported on in Yarlswood? Well, Serco have insisted that some of the instances of very aggressive, offensive language used by some of their guards is not indicative of a wider endemic problem at Yarlswood. But nevertheless, we know that they have suspended one of the officers who featured in the film pending an investigation. And we also know that Serco have asked Kate Lampard, a former barrister, to undertake an independent review of the situation at Yarlswood. Now, she was the woman who was appointed by the NHS to look into allegations of Jimmy Savile's abuse at hospitals. So that is as a result of our film. We also know that Yvette Cooper, who was called in the past for the ending of the detention of pregnant women, has responded today to say the Home Office should have looked into this themselves. She's the shadow Home Secretary, of course. So what are MPs who are reporting tomorrow on Yarlswood? What are they likely to say? Well, tomorrow, um, a group of cross-party MPs will publish the report of their own investigation into de detention as a whole, the way detention is used here in Britain. We understand that they too will focus on this issue of pregnant women, saying that they should, it should come to an end, the um, detention of pregnant women. We also understand that they will be looking at this whole issue of when you go into prison, you know when you're going to get out. When you are detained in places like Yarlswood, you do not know when you're going to get out. And we know that that's something they've been really concerned about in the past.